Okay, today we're looking at <coughs> book number 44 of the Bible. Book number 44 is called Acts. Now, why is it called Acts? Because it's about the Acts of the Apostles. It's now after Jesus has risen from the dead. You remember Jesus died? We looked at that last week. Jesus died. He was buried. His soul descended into hell for three days and three nights to pay for our sins. And what happened three days later? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> Simon. He rose again. That's right. Three days later, he rose again from the dead. And then at the day of, after he appeared to his disciples, he ascended up into heaven and he told them what? Remember last week? Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. But in Acts, we see <coughs> it's said in a different way. What Jesus said to them. He said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So that's like, that would be like Jesus saying to us, you're going to be witnesses to me in Sydney, you know, and in all Judea, so it's like New South Wales, and in Samaria, so this is like another state, and then into the uttermost part of the earth, all over the world. So we're meant to preach the gospel to every creature as much as we can, to everybody all over the world, uh, starting right here. Right? So that's why we go, you know, you may know, we go door knocking, because we're trying to tell people about Jesus. We're trying to do what Jesus commanded us to do. Now, <clears throat> after Jesus rose again from the uh, dead, he said, yeah, you wait for the promise of the Father. He's going to send the Holy Ghost. Um, Atticus, pay attention. Thank you. I'll play with this one. <clears throat> pay attention, buddy. Sit down. Okay. So the apostles, they gathered into an upper room and then they prayed. They were praying together. And you know what happened on the day of Pentecost? They were praying and these cloven tongues, like of, as of fire, sat upon each of them. So this was the Holy Ghost coming upon them. And what happened was miraculous. They were able to speak in languages that they had never learned before. Can you imagine that? If you only knew English, for example, but then all of a sudden you could speak Greek, you could speak Italian, you could speak African languages, you could speak in all sorts of different languages. You can ask a question at the end time. <laughs> All sorts of different languages. And then they went out and they preached the gospel to all the people that were gathered there at the day of Pentecost. And you know what people said about them? They thought these people were crazy. They're like, oh, what are these people? Are they drunk? And no, it was the power of the Holy Ghost enabling them to speak languages that they had not learned. And Peter was one of them that stood up at the day of Pentecost where all these people had gathered together to come and worship God. And he was preaching them to them and telling them what had happened, that Jesus has died and was buried and was, has risen again. And look at what he said to everyone in Acts 2, 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you see how the apostles are now going out and they're preaching the gospel to every creature. That was the message from Peter on the day of Pentecost. So some other things we see in the book of Acts are some of the miracles that the apostles did. So one of the miracles that the apostles did was Peter and John, when they were walking into the temple, there was a beggar asking for money. And he couldn't walk, he was lame. Right? So he's sitting there, he's asking for money. And you know what Peter says to him? He says, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I'm going to give you. So he doesn't have any money, but then he heals him. He says, rise up. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. So this beggar who had been lame from birth stood up on his feet and he was able to walk. Wow, so that got the attention of the, of the religious leaders of the day, didn't it? So now that the apostles have been left here by Jesus, given the Holy Ghost, they were out preaching the gospel. They are out doing miracles so people would uh, know about Jesus and know uh, what it means to be saved. But, you know, doing these miracles, you'd think a lot of people would be very happy. No, they weren't happy because it showed that, you know, these people were telling the truth and they didn't like the truth. 
So this actually got them into a lot of trouble and they were brought before people and they were asked to testify and when they were given the chance to speak, when they were being persecuted, look at what Peter says here. Again, he's preaching the gospel. He says in here in Acts chapter 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Because people were asking, well, how did you heal this man who was lame from birth? And they were saying, well, it's because of the power of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ had given them. Now, not every story in the Acts of the Apostles was a positive story. You have some bad things that happened in the Acts of the Apostles as well. One of the such stories early on in Acts is in the early church, <coughs> there was a husband and wife by the name of Ananias and Sapphira. And what they did is they sold, they sold a piece of land and they said to the church, they said, we give all the money that we got from the land that we sold to the church. That's what they were telling everybody. But they didn't actually do that. What they did is they kept part of it. So we don't know what portion they kept. Maybe they kept a small amount, like 10% of it. But they told everybody, we gave it all. And then they laid that money at the apostles' feet. But Peter said to them, why are you lying? You kept back. Part of, the, part of the price of the land. So because they lied about how much they had given to God, rather than just telling everybody, well, we're just giving a portion and we are keeping some for ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. God killed Ananias and Sapphira for that. So God took their life. He made them move from the earth into eternity because of that. So the lesson here is, you know, we don't lie about, you know, what we do for God. You know, the things that we do, God does not like that. And in the early church, this Ananias and Sapphira tried to do that and they were both killed because of it. So a lot of positive things happening in the New Testament, in the Acts of the Apostles, but there are some negative things too because I think people were starting to... Uh, <clears throat> not fear God. So God did something like this to instill some fear back into the church. So remember I was telling you that the apostles were doing a lot of miracles? Well, people didn't like that because they were doing miracles, healing people, and because they were healing people of their sicknesses and of their disabilities, and they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, people were listening to them. People were starting to take notice. And the people that were in charge at the time didn't like that. So they threw them into jail. They tried to throw all the apostles into jail and told them, you're not allowed to tell people about Jesus. But you know what? Even though they were beaten and jailed, they kept doing it anyway. And they said, this is what they said. In Acts chapter 5, 29, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So we're going to do what God tells us to do we're not going to do what man tells us to do. So you can see here, even though they're jailed and they were beaten, but look at their faces. They're happy. <laughs> Why are they happy? Because they're saying it's good that we're able to suffer for the cause of Jesus Christ. They counted it joy that they were able to suffer. I'll let you ask something after this, Simon. <laughs> so they were happy even though they were beaten and bruised because they obeyed God rather than men. Let's read this together. You ready? Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. <laughs> and uh, here's where I'll end the story today and we'll continue next week. Like I said, not everything in the Acts of the Apostles was positive because not only some people died for lying to the church, but because of the persecution, not everyone just got beaten and got let go. This is the story of the first martyr, Stephen. So Stephen was one of the early deacons preaching to the Jews. And the Jews didn't like what he had to say because they had rejected Jesus Christ as their saviour. And as he was preaching to the Jews, they got so angry that he was telling them about Jesus Christ and that they had to believe on him 
to be saved and the fact that the Jews had always rejected the prophets that have come before, all the ones that we had learned about. You know, they got so angry, they stoned him. What does it mean to be stoned? It means when people throw rocks at you until you, until you die. So you had Stephen here getting stoned and he looked up to heaven and he saw Jesus Christ and he said here, look, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And you know, one of the things that Stephen said as well before he was stoned, he said uh, to, about the people, lay not this sin to their charge. Isn't that an amazing thing? That while people are stoning you, they are killing you, and yet Stephen is asking God to forgive them of this sin. Now, why is he able to do that? Why is Stephen able to forgive the people that killed him and, and ask that God would not condemn them for this sin that they were committing? Well, it's because he knew that Jesus Christ had died for his sins. See, so we know if Jesus Christ has died for our sins, we're also able to forgive others of the sins that they commit against us. So next week we'll continue. I hope you learned something there this week. Next week we'll continue and we'll learn more about the persecution of the early church and we're going to look at a man by the name of Saul. Who, who's heard of Saul before? Huh? Who knows who, who, what his name was changed to? Paul. Oh, I can't hear you. Paul. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so we're going to look at him next week and we'll learn more <laughs> about him next week. All right, today we've got some games. So today we're going to play dodge because we learned a bit about oh, stoning, right? Stoning is when they kill people with stones, but we're going to have turned this into a game where we're going to play a bit of dodgeball. Okay, so I'll teach you guys how to play this and then uh, we'll have some fun over there. Okay, so let's go over there. I'm going to get some balls. Dodgeball. Ha, ha, ha.